Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence. Welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I sincerely hope this video finds you well. And in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the newest fragrance by the company Mugler. And this one is called Alien Man Mirage. So make sure to stay tuned. So this fragrance was released just this year in 2020. I know 2020 has been a super busy year. I think there have already been over 15 or 20 designer releases and I've pretty much purchased them all. It's really hard to keep count. I've even done a top 10 video on my channel. And here we have yet another one to add to that list or to that collection. Now this one is called Alien Man Mirage. And of course there is a women's counterpart as well. I have had an opportunity to sample that one, been playing around with it for a while. Maybe a first impression video will be in the works but today I'm super excited to review the men's counterpart so just keep in mind I will be reviewing the men's version even though they both have the same name so this one is supposed to be a lighter more citrusy and in my opinion a more summery version of the original now one thing that is to be said about the original is it's a stark contrast from the women's version the women's version is really heavy on the note of jasmine and if I may add it's an indolic jasmine so it's a little barnyardy it's a little animalic and it perhaps is not for everyone although I personally love the way that it smells now the men's version is quite aromatic so it has this note of dill weed so it has this sort of herbal culinary aromatic presence and I remember when I first looked at the note breakdown I said wow this sounds quite interesting and I remember I wasn't totally surprised by it because I felt like it was a little bit too simple and a little bit too linear and I perhaps just wasn't overly intrigued by the smell well things could certainly change today. I'm so excited to tell you what I think of this release. Let's start things off with the presentation. Now before I begin the video, I do want to mention that there will be a giveaway attached to this video for an official sample from the brand that I received from the website. All you need to do is leave a comment down below, like this video, and make sure that you're subscribed to this channel as well. So the box for this fragrance is quite similar to other Alien Man releases with the exception that you have the circle going around the name and the logo. Kind of reminds me of an Ouroboros. The serial number is punched into the box on the top right hand corner. You do have this alien pattern punched into the box on the sides and the back just says new fragrance and it gives you some information on how to join the circle which is the official Mugler Club. The bottle for this one is also quite similar to the other alien bottles uh, with the exception that this one is transparent and there's a little bit of a blue hue and a tint uh, towards the bottom of the bottle. On the very bottom, you'll see your serial number and information if you're looking to authenticate your purchase. And this fragrance does have a built-in atomizer. All you have to do is press down and the distribution is rather nice and you can even control how much you wanna spray. Let's continue with the smell. <laughs> So as soon as this fragrance opens up, there is inevitably a fragrance that this one reminds me of. And I hate to say it, but it kind of has something in here that is reminiscent of Invictus Aqua. And I know so many fragrances have been utilizing this Invictus Aqua aquatic, salty, ozonic, sweet, vanillic, minty, uh, clove, eugenol, bay leaf thing going on in there. And I guess this is another fragrance to add to the mix. But this one is not entirely like Invictus Aqua. So it's not as close to Invictus Aqua as something like Run Wild by Davidoff or Urban Hero by Jimmy Choo. No, this one actually is a little bit different despite having that Invictus Aqua thing going on in the base. So this one at the same time also reminds me of Superman Eau Fresh by Jean Paul Gaultier, which is a Lamal flanker. So. You have a little bit of that minty thing going on in here. You have a little bit of the sweetness going on in here. And it's the comparison to the latter fragrance that I mentioned, where when I initially smelled it, I said, wow, this is bringing me really happy vibes. And I was trying to put my finger on it and trying to determine why am I feeling this way? Why is this such a happy fragrance? Why am I being reminded of really positive occasions? And it dawned on me that when I went on a cruise a couple years ago with my wife, I brought one of the Lamal Eau Fresh variants 
variants with me. I wore it all throughout that cruise. There's a little bit of that sweetness, but then there's also like this minty presence and you definitely have the same thing going on in here. Now, I'm not a fan of reading off note breakdowns and I know this one is citrusy and ambery and ozonic and aquatic and all of these other things, but I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that it takes a little bit of that aromatic herbal presence from the original and it adds a sweet undercurrent that they choose to call amber. Amber is a fantasy note. It's actually an accord of different ingredients. Yes, I do get a little bit of that vanilla in the base, but then there's also something a little minty in here that I would equate to like a clove eugenol smell. And if I recall correctly, the original Invictus also had a little bit of that minty eugenol vibe on account of the note of bay leaf. And as I'm sure you know, Eugenol is a naturally occurring compound that is found in bay leaf. It's also found in clove as well as many other ingredients. And of course, if you look at the back of the box and you actually read through the ingredients, you see that it does contain eugenol just like 90% like of other fragrances. But there's a little bit of this sweetness going on in here compounded with that minty vibe that I get at the same time still smelling rather fresh and a little salty and ozonic and oceanic. And it kind of reminds me of one of the Lamal Eau Fresh flankers. Now, again, it's not a clone, it's not a carbon copy, and it is a true flanker to the original Alien, which I really do appreciate because I think we've seen or we've smelled a lot of these flankers that smell nothing like the original. So if you remember the Angel Men variant, right? So Amen, they have several different flankers. So you have Pure Malt, Pure Havan, Ultra Zest, Cryptamint, Pure Energy, none of those fragrances smell like the original Amen. The only one that actually smelled remotely similar is Le Pajon de Cuir, which is the essence of leather. So a lot of people were uh, colloquially referring to it as pure leather. That's really the only one that smells close to the original Amen. So this one is a true flanker to the men's alien version because you can actually get hints and remnants of the original alien man. Now, like I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why I wasn't a super big fan of Alien Man or Alien Man Fusion is because I thought they were a bit too plain. I thought that they didn't take too much of a creative risk. Here, they brought it in the direction of what's been selling on the market and what resonates with people and what is sure to secure the sale, but it's also teamed up with those iconic and familiar elements from the original, which I wasn't too crazy about, but I like that this is a more acceptable version, if I may use that term, and I think it's a more likable version as well. Now, I do think that from an objective standpoint, a lot of people who smell this and who perhaps are not a fan of that Invictus Aqua, Jimmy Choo, uh, Urban Hero DNA, they're going to smell and they're going to say, okay, this is something that's been done before, but it is necessary to actually spend some time wearing this one. I purchased this one a while ago as soon as I saw that it was available on uh, Terry Mugler's website. And so I'm really happy that I have it in my collection because I am a collector but this is one that I went out there and purchased with my own money. Overall, I think it's a very pleasant scent. I think it's very easy to wear. It also strikes me as the type of fragrance that you would get complimented on, and I would have a very easy time recommending this to people. But just keep in mind, it does have that familiar, sweet, minty element in the dry down that might be reminiscent of other fragrances. So if you're not a fan of those fragrances, I would recommend steering clear from this one. But keep in mind that I don't find this to be as close to like an Invictus Aqua as something like Atlantic by Bath & Body Works, which I recently reviewed and I said was an uninspiring sort of shadow version of Invictus Aqua. But this one, on the other hand, I like a little bit more. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, like I mentioned earlier, I really like the fact that this one does smell a bit like the original Alien for Men. So it is a true flanker, and I do think that the overall smell will not be as polarizing. Now, I don't think that the original Alien for Men ever had a challenging smell about it. It was very easy to get along with, a little bit quirky because of the dillweed note and those aromatic nuances compounded with those unconventional woodsy bases. And I know that this one touts having like a leather finish. I don't get much leathery 
uh, or too many leathery notes from this one, but I do think that it is a very accommodating smell on account of that sweet undercurrent that I referenced earlier. In terms of the longevity for this one, I've got about six to seven hours, so it is quite good. It's not going to last as long as like an Invictus Legend or an Invictus Intense, but do keep in mind that the longevity is average given the concentration. Projection was great for the first two hours. I don't think that it ever radiated beyond an arm's length, but you'll definitely get noticed if somebody enters your intimate personal bubble. In terms of the versatility, I think it's quite good. I do think that this is the type of fragrance, especially as conveyed by the notes and what it's evocative of for me, I would be more likely to wear this one when the weather gets a little bit hotter outside as opposed to in the dead of winter, just because there is something about this one that reminds me of hot weather. And if you look at the ad campaign for this one too, it's called Mirage. You're in the middle of a desert. And so I think there might be a little bit of like a subliminal messaging there, but in terms of the way that it's constructed and how it smells to me, I do think that it would be a better fit for the hotter weather. But of course you can wear this all year round, especially if you're wearing it in a climate controlled environment. There is something in here that smells a bit like other masculine fragrances as well, but I do believe that all fragrances are unisex, wear what you want, wear what makes you happy. And I do think that this one has a bit more of a casual vibe to it on account of that hint of sweetness. I think if you're looking for something to wear for a dressed up occasion, I would probably go for one of the Amen flankers over this one. Uh, so I do think that this one is a bit more casual. And then in terms of the presentation, I actually like that they went with a more transparent look. I think the name of the fragrance is also kind of cool. So my final verdict is I actually like this fragrance. I think that this was a worthwhile purchase. I like it a lot more than the original and uh, the Fusion version. And I do think it's a little bit more accommodating. However, if you have smelled a lot of these other fragrances that have that similar sweet thing going on in the base, this might be one that you will not be immediately drawn to, but it's up to you to make that decision for yourself. So definitely go out there, give it a shot, don't blind buy, try it on your own skin, spend some time with it, and then make the final call. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of the brand new fragrance by Thierry Mugler, and this one is called Alien Man Mirage. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would love it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. It's easy and it's absolutely free. All you need to do is click that red button in the corner and also make sure to click on the notification bell right next to it. This way, whenever I do upload fragrance related content, especially that on new fragrance releases, it will be delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. And of course that includes reviews, top 10 lists, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, announcements, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.